the front and then ask them to politely step aside. Um, and secondly, if you use the microphone provided, state your name and the organisation you work for. And we'll start with Rob Dorsett there, Sky Sports News. Hi, Gareth. It's Rob Dorsett at Sky Sports News. Um, we saw Harry came with some pretty heavy strapping on his left ankle out in training. Is he OK? Yes, yeah. I think uh, a lot of the players um, have their ankles strapped for training, so that's just normal procedure. Good man. Um, you've had a bit of time to reflect on a very solid performance against Croatia. Which areas, if any, do you feel England need to improve on? Well, we can always improve in every area of the game. Um, we, we obviously played a different system. Um, so uh, in every phase of the game, with and without the ball, you're looking at how you can improve. And, um, uh, you know, always with this team and their age, um, the, uh, the things they can get better at. And collectively as a team, um, there's, there's always things to work on. Created a lot of chances, didn't perhaps take them. No, no, clearly you didn't take them. But is that a concern for you, that you're creating chances that aren't being taken? No, the, the concern would be if we weren't creating chances. The most important thing is that um, we were dangerous, we looked a threat, um, we looked like we were, um, were in good positions to score goals. The, uh, <coughs> the technical uh, ability around the penalty area was good. On, on a difficult pitch, you know, sometimes you needed an extra touch and uh, it wasn't easy for people with their footing, I think, for both teams. Um, but, you know, the players that we've got, if we create those chances, they will score them. Are you still fully confident in Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford in, in those situations? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the formation there. Um, will you stick with it? Is that was that a one-off for the Croatia game, or is it something you'll look to use increasingly going forward, and in, in this game as well? Mm. Well, it's good that we've got options because uh, different teams pose dif dif different tactical problems, and um, you know the other night we we knew we needed to get tight to Croatia's midfield tomorrow is very similar um, but Spain have a you know slightly different style to Croatia um, we, we know their technical ability um, but we've also got to cause them problems with the ball we can't come here and just defend for 90 minutes we've got to at Wembley by the end of the game we'd got more comfortable with their style of play and in the last 30 minutes we we were the, the dominant team but We've got to do that earlier in the game, be brave enough to, to use the ball well and uh, cause them problems because we know that um, the, the ability that they have. OK, before we move on, can we now ask the photographers to step out of the room? Thank you very much. Continue, Rob. Um, Jordan Henderson and John Stone's obviously suspended. I don't expect you to tell me who you're bringing in, but what are your thoughts on who might be in contention? Well, um, I think it's probably pretty clear Joe Gomez would be... Um, coming in for John um, he's, he's in really good form with his club and um, his matches for us uh, against Spain against Brazil have, have been really um, polished performances he's a, of course a young defender but um, he's, he's a very good defender good, good athleticism uses the ball well um, so uh, you know I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him in this game it's another opportunity for us to look at uh, a, a couple of younger players and um, you know we're slowly building uh, a, a squad of players who are comfortable playing at the highest level midfield midfield will will have to be without Jordan Henderson yeah <laughs> good man uh, Jordan um, good to see you um, what was that game like to play in at Croatia from a player's perspective yeah um, it was a bit different at senior level um, I've grown up uh, youth level after England. You you do play in pretty em empty stadiums, and but for the senior level it was a bit different. But um, the most important thing was to get the clean sheet and try and get the win. And we didn't get the win, but we got the clean sheet and got the draw. You could clearly hear the supporters that did get a view on the hill because they called for you to give them a wave, and you did. Yeah, I heard it from a, a distance, and uh, I think that's England fans all over. They travel all over the world for us. Um. Does it get much tougher in European football than Spain away? Um, they're a top opponent and um, the one we've been prepared for and when it's a great great challenge for us as a team and to build on and these are the games we want to be uh, playing in and trying to get the win against and um, 
like you say, we've prepared well for it and um, hopefully we can go and show the fans in the country what we're made of. They've scored 10 goals in the last two games and they've had seven different scorers in those 10 goals. From a goalkeeper's perspective, is there not one threat you can focus on? Is it across the board? Yeah, as you've said, they're a top side and um, like you say, I'll have to be on my ear game and hopefully keep a clean sheet for the team. And um, as long as we, if we can try and cut that out, we've got the ability up top to go and score our goals as well. But we've got to be wary of that, but we're well prepared for it. Gareth, one final question on Spain, if that's OK. Sergio Ramos has scored t- two in two. Um, it seems they have a real fluidity in the way they're playing. Is that particularly difficult to counter? Yeah, well, I think um, their style is a little bit different. Um, you know, they've, they've got a new coach who is a top coach and uh, uh, you can see the difference he's tried to make to the team. They're a little bit more direct. They have more players with speed in, uh, in the front three. Um, with Sol Niguez, they have a midfield player who gets in the box a lot more as well. So, um, although the style um, and the philosophy is very similar, it's um, tactically a little bit different. And um, um, as I say, in that final third, a, a bit more of a direct threat where, you know, in the, in the summer they had wide players who used to come off the line and connect the game. Uh, so we've, we've got to be prepared for that. It's as difficult a test as you can have in European football at the moment, if not world football. But um, we're ready. We, we have seen enough of Spain. Um, as I said, at Wembley, uh, early in the game, I thought we were a little bit slow to get started. Um, and as the game wore on, we, um, we adapted to the, their pressure and uh, used the ball a lot better. And we've got to make sure we do that throughout the 90 minutes tomorrow. Um, Gareth, uh, Harry Winks has played very well against Real Madrid and Barcelona in consecutive seasons now. Uh, Sometimes you see him quite deep in that midfield position, other times you see him playing in a more advanced role, almost in a kind of number 10 situation. What what do you think his natural position is and what what are his attributes? Mm. Well, I think he can play uh, as a a deep line pivot or as a a number eight. And um, he's very good at connecting the game. He, He sees good pictures. Uh, his technique is, is solid. He's less of a final third player, more of a builder of the game. Um, but um, technically good footballer and one who's composed and, as you say, has, um, has faced top opposition in the two teams you've mentioned already. So he has some experience of big matches. Um, we were really pleased the England game he played for us. Um, OK, you can say it was only Lithuania, but... Sometimes playing for England is a, as much about can you handle wearing the shirt and can you handle the um, everything that goes with that um, as much as it is the opponent. Tomorrow you've got both because we've got a top opponent and you've got to handle playing for England. But um, all of the young players that are in the squad are capable of doing that. Gareth, uh, I read you talk about the change of formation and it sounded like you were saying we weren't confident enough to be this 4-3-3 perhaps, but now you're talking about uh, it gives you different options. So can you explain a little bit more about why you've moved on from that and details of it? Yeah, in the summer, or leading into the summer, probably a year before the finals, we looked at the players we had, the experiences they had, the way that we wanted to build from the back, and we felt that the three gave us a little bit more license. We knew we would make mistakes in doing that, and the three gave us a little bit more of an insurance against those mistakes. Um, it also allowed us to get a different profile of midfield players into the team with, with some solidity in defence. So um, we felt that was the best way to go for, for the tournament. And then after that, you, you look to evolve, and I've got to look at... Not only the players we have now, but the young players we have coming through our system and the um, tactical system that suits them the best. And we have some very promising number eights and very promising wide players in particular. So uh, to play a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 is, is um, a, a good option for us moving forward. Come to Harley, Kate. Um, hi, Gareth. Uh, the, um there's been a lot of talk and debate about tiredness post World Cup, and I'm not talking about Harry Kane here, but just generally, do you feel that 
some of your players have started the season a bit more slowly at club level. Is it going to take more time than usual to get up to speed because of the truncated summer and late pre-season, etc.? I think um, uh, I think it's psychological freshness rather than physical because I think everybody um, you know adapts their training load uh, appropriately. Um, but I think when you see the league, you know, there's probably a, a lot of teams in the league that haven't started yet at the level that um, that they would be at their maximum and lots of injuries uh, across certainly our league. I don't know about the rest of Europe. So, um, yeah, it, it's a balance. I don't, I don't really understand why our league started so early, um, but they did. Um, and so the really difficult situation for all the clubs because... You know, some of them couldn't have fielded a team without. If you look at Tottenham, you know they had so many players in the semi-finals of the the World Cup. They had to put their players sh straight into matches on the back of very little pre-season. So um, it was a, an impossible situation for the coaches, really. Hola, es una pregunta para Jordan. Te quería preguntar. Tu opinión sobre David de Gea y qué crees que le pudo pasar en el Mundial para que no fuera el portero que vemos habitualmente con, con el United. Yeah, he's a um, he's a top goalkeeper and uh, I'd say he's up there for the best in the world at the moment and yeah, some sometimes games don't go for him but that's that's what football's about but yeah, I respect him highly and he's a very top goal good goalkeeper. Okay, any further questions? Okay, we'll end it there. Thank you very much.